What the hell is hypertension? yelled the man, that you doctors keep banging on about. To be fair, he'd heard this word loads of times, but a simple explanation was lacking, no doubt. It seems to be a fairly common issue that doctors blether in medical speak, and the poor patients just nod in agreement, embarrassed to ask, so sit quiet and meek. Anyway, this chap deserved to know the details of the illness that he'd been labelled with, so I took some time to explain high blood pressure, then some ways to manage this I'd tried to give. Jargon causes issues in all walks of life. It appears unnecessary and pretentious to me, so one thing that I often turn to instead is an imaginative and clear analogy. When it came to this man's hypertension, central heating in the boiler was used to demonstrate the cardiovascular workings, softening his demeanour, putting out his fuse. Think of your heart as your body's boiler, pumping blood to all your different tissues. It does this really effectively unless a poor lifestyle or bad luck causes it issues. The blood vessels like arteries and veins resemble your home's tubes and pipes. Being open and free from blockage allows good flow, which is what they like. The organs and tissues are the radiators. Blood sent there delivering nutrients and oxygen. And once it offloads this all to them, the fluid travels back to the boiler again. Over and over this process happens with every pump of the boiler or beat of the heart. Happening over a hundred thousand times a day, this system is an exquisite piece of art. Like your boiler, the pressure must be maintained within a very specific range non-stop. Too low and the organs don't get what they need. Too high and then things start to go pop. Now all of the things I'm about to tell you are merely part of the blood pressure story. But today is only really about lifestyle and how it can postpone memento mori. First, let's have a look at the wonderful heart. With each beat, it squirts blood around to every corner of the body that needs it with its ever-present lub-dub sound. You can make your heart much stronger with regular sweaty exercise most days. This pump then becomes more efficient and rising blood pressure this helps to delay. This exercise also causes the blood vessels to widen so the pressure in them drops, which reduces the risk of hypertension, perhaps allowing some medications to stop. The other thing that exercise might do is cause increased collateral blood flow, which is the development of extra vessels, a backup plan through which the blood can go. So what else can bring your blood pressure down? A healthy diet certainly plays a part. In particular, a whole food plant-based one or a Mediterranean one would be where to start. You'll have heard of narrowing of the arteries, which is caused by fatty cholesterol plaques that line the vessels around the body and can lead to strokes and heart attacks. Well, studies have shown that the aforementioned diets reduce atheromas, making arteries lean. Have a read of the Engine 2 diet, written by triathlete cum fireman Rip Esselstein. Next up is the ever-present condiment salt. I'm afraid this is added to almost everything, but it can push our blood pressure right up. Look up the DASH diet as somewhere to begin. The next two things are pretty obvious. That of smoking cigarettes and alcoholic drinks, both of these send your pressure sky high, so stub out the former and chuck the latter down the sink. Stress is also a big contributor to this, as it causes a surge in cortisol production, which gets us ready for fight or flight, resulting in the opposite of blood pressure reduction. Now this is okay for very short periods, but nowadays our lives are so busy with mess that we are drenched in cortisol most of the day, 
as a result of this unrelenting stress. So it's important to take the time to relax, away from screens or toxic pastimes, and consider a more wholesome way to de-stress. Meditation, yoga, or walks in the sunshine. Lastly, I'd like to mention sleep once again, which I've done in a video once before. But better sleep reduces blood pressure, so please do try and get some more. Exercise, diet, relaxation and sleep, it really seems obvious when it's written down. So perhaps the next time you hear hypertension, you'll have a knowing nod, not a frown. Now my patient had a few choices, which previously he might not have had, instead of just being filled full of tablets making the pharmaceutical companies quite glad. I'm not saying the medication doesn't have a place, but they should be part of a holistic stance. And this is what I relayed to this chap whose understanding was now more advanced. He took up sweaty exercise and then became a whole food plant-based fan. And what do you know, his BP came down and nothing was prescribed for this man. While his engagement might not be typical, most won't eat green and run around the town, this bloke managed to prove to himself you don't always need drugs to get blood pressure down.